welcome back to another episode of Fat Chat. Uh, very excited to have a, a filling co-host with me today. We've all heard his voice, probably too much to be honest on this uh, on this podcast, but I'm very excited to have him today. Please, everybody, welcome Mr. Iron Man himself, Matt Burton. Good to be yes, back. Whistling Thank himself. You. Good, Thanks good. To- Invited me back. So good, mate. So good to uh, have you back in. But uh, I actually mentioned it funnily enough on the last podcast, just really briefly. And I was like, I'm going to have to get Matt in at some time to tell the story. Mm. And I've actually got you in today, which worked out so well as the fill in. Yeah. Uh, You've had like a crazy last two months, three months, since Buster's in pretty much. Run everybody through what's happened. What's been happening with you? Well, I'll. I am surprised I'm, you're still talking to me. I yeah. was kind of hoping that would just stop Mate, us. you reply to every one of my Instagram videos <laughs> and every one of my stories telling me how shit I am all the time. So, it doesn't stop. Right? It's all about keeping you humble, you know. <laughs> yeah, stay humble. Um, yeah, I had a good month of December. I still was training. And then the start of January... My foot got so swollen, I couldn't walk on it. So and I've, that was the injury because you, you actually were talking on mm, the podcast that we did that yep. during the run, it was like a blister that burst or something or you had a cut there or something before yeah. and you had to cut the shoe out? Yeah, bun- so I've got... A bunion, bunion. My feet are ugly, yeah. right? But that's okay. I've seen them. Yeah, yeah, yeah they've, they've You they've had them out when we went to uh, Nobu of all there places, go, actually. Yeah, had had your one, one foot out the shoe and I was like, put that dog <laughs> away, please. <laughs> he's, <laughs> he's, <laughs> he's, he's lying again, like all these videos. Um <laughs> And then, uh, yeah, I thought, well, what was a bunionette? wasn't a bunionette. And it was actually, it's, it, it's all made sense to me now, but it spiraled through January, February, where I've had two surgeries, spent about two and a half, three weeks in hospital. That was crazy. In and out. And uh, I'm still on antibiotics now, but it was like a bone infection in my small, uh, mm. smaller toe. The fifth, and it all the happened muscle. from a bunion that you would like try, or you got that treated first and then... Yeah, so it was, I actually had uh, like a, I guess... A skin, an open wound yeah. on the outside of my foot in the fifth metatarsal. It's just a little toe on yep. my right foot. And I, from last October, I just was training and then and racing and I was like, oh, push that'll through. settle. And then, Being a psycho. Yeah, and I've got bunions. So I was like, oh, mate, it's just a bunionette. You know, I see a podiatrist and work with my sports doctor often. And it wasn't until I literally woke up on a Sunday the 7th or 6th of January and I couldn't put any weight through my foot. And then that night I went to hospital and oh that's God. when it all started. And it just unraveled for me. I had yeah. to, I was finding out more as we were going. You're having a scan at different times. And I went home once, you know, had a pick line in, was on so on heavy anti, uh, yeah, antibiotics. And a after. pick line, for anybody that doesn't know, that's like <laughs> literally a line up your vein yeah. into your heart to yeah. put anti- antibiotics straight into your bloodstream and into your heart. Which yeah, because you're not getting great flow down to the feet. Yeah. So if they can stick that into there, then it's going to, sort of pump straight down that way at least yeah because oral antibiotics mess with your stomach number one and then also it's not they're not it doesn't fully absorb as much mm. yeah yeah so that worked but then i was off anti they took me off antibiotics too quickly and then i found out only a week and a half ago there still is bone infection so Ugh. that was another little stint in so oh. how many weeks is that been? that was like six or seven weeks total yeah, like two that, months two total. months yeah i lost two months of the yeah. year so yep. I've got 10 months this year. That is so wild. Mm. So wild. And but you have the one surgery, right? And then you being, again, the complete psycho that you are, the advice <laughs> was something along the lines of like, oh yeah, like you can just, as long as you can bear with the pain, like mm. we think we sorted it all, do what you can. You, next day or two days or whatever, you tell the story and you're running and you're cycling and you're swimming, you're doing all this stuff with this with this wound. <laughs> no, I, just in case the doctors listen to this, yeah. I didn't swim. Oh, you I didn't wasn't swim. allowed to swim. Oh, okay, sorry, sorry, sorry. Yeah, yeah. I didn't run. I literally couldn't. It was yeah. too painful. And uh, so I was riding. I wasn't doing heaps, but as I then later found out, oh, maybe I should have backed you it off. Have, a bit. Yeah. It was a couple of hours, but it was early January. It was like, you know, 40 degrees most days here. So it was sweating and it was an open wound then, right? And then after the second surgery is when it was stitched. So it was like the first time they just took the abscess out that yep. was there and then washed the skin. The second time they went deep enough into the bone once it was realized the infection's in the bone. Um, oh my God. And then I came out and it was stitched. And that's for me, that was a relief because that means typically things will heal better. When they're open wounds, they take ages because yep. there's a lot more at play in the environment. And so it's yeah, it's healed pretty well now. I'm swimming. I've Good. been back on the bike for a few days. I actually hit on the side of caution last week and didn't get back on the bike when they cleared me to do so. Yeah. Um, so it's 
Yeah, I feel a way better recovery about it. though. Yeah, I know. Well, I, I came and saw properly. you. I saw you in yeah. hospital, and I saw you. Well, I saw you just before you went back to hospital Again, at your, at your was, house. You just kept bothering me. I just <laughs> kept rocking up at the door, mate. Kept rocking up. And I come see you. Uh, it was actually, I think, <laughs> I came and saw you, and you were like after the first lot, and I was like, oh wow, like wow, that looks really bad. And yeah. you're like, oh yeah, no, it's getting better, blah blah blah. And I was like, okay, cool. And I came and visited you, and then I think that afternoon or later mm. or the next day or something, then you went to hospital. So yeah. it's probably just seeing me that you really just flared it back up. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, you were trying to show me photos of when you had something removed from your foot and yes. try and compare, and then I was like, yeah, but check this out. Yeah, but check, yeah this is very true. Check you won. Window. You oh, won. Right. You won, as per usual. Smashed you win, bro. Yeah. So, <laughs> like two hours again. And then like, your bo- like a bone infection, mm. if the infection gets into your bone, you can like potentially lose yeah. wherever that infection is, right? Like how actually close was it to maybe even losing your foot? Because it was pretty close. Yeah, they weren't sure. So they scan it. They can see there's this like, looks like there's a dark zone on the bone. Yeah. When they rolled me in there, I think it was a joke, but it wasn't a joke. Uh, and they're like, oh, we're not sure how much of the foot we'll have to remove until we go in and have a look. So <laughs> then I rolled out and asked the nurse, have I got all my toes? She's like, yep, you're good. And then it was then last week again, I went back in for a review to potentially, if, if you have surgery again the third time, they would have to remove a toe. Yeah. Because it's too much of a risk to then put your body through another... Another You can't just be on antibiotics for 12 months. Yeah. You know, it's like when you can fix it. So the concern is you don't really feel like you need your small toe to run, but I would have to retrain my gait. So potentially I would have lost this. You don't actually... That was going to be my next question. You don't need your small toe to run, potentially. I've been running with it for 36 years. So So you kind of know how to do it that way. You prefer not to learn without... Yeah. When my sports doctor was like, I've never re- I've never worked with someone to retrain a gait. So I'm not sure. Like it's yeah. obviously it's able to be done. Your body's very intelligent and will adapt. But yeah, I, I don't know. I'm I was tired of things just like progressing. Yeah. So I was like, oh maybe I you know. It's very easy when someone's like, Oh, just take it easy. Just just rest. But and you then cannot when you're you're well, you're a prof- you're a professional athlete. I'd have lost two months. Exactly right, yeah. and also like the the end of the season and everything that you had in uh, December, you were flying. Mm. Like you were like you know yeah. you were saying on here that this is like the best you've ever been and your know, best condition. You're looking yeah. forward to this next little patch, and then that happens. Yeah, and then it's like like you said, you lose your two months. Yeah, and now I'm doing stuff like I've I've never had that long off. Fifteen mm. years. The longest I might have off the bike is a week. Wow, maybe. So it's two months and I'm on the bike now and I am terrible. I, <laughs> no, you're back to body badge levels. Well, oh, I'm good. Like, just <laughs> Probably the, not that bad still, but... Just the general aerobic fitness and the the heart rate response is like nothing I've ever taken note of before. Yep. Like I've, I have to ignore power, yep. say, because I'm, I'm not running yet. But um, in the pool, things have come back okay, but I'm just gasp, gasping for air a lot more because obviously you're just... You're well, elevated, you just had right? that time off, yeah. But yeah, it's, it's helped me probably for then coaching others or working with others who may not do the hours or have the conditioning. Yes, muscle memory is a thing and I'll be okay long-term. But yeah, understanding you have zones that you just can't train to. I can essentially go to threshold every day at the moment. Yep. If I wow. eat well and sleep well, I can go take my heart rate there in most sessions. So you reckon it's actually made you more sympathetic to people? A little that- bit. A little bit? A little wow. bit. Wow. <laughs> wow. I don't believe it. I don't believe it. Yeah. <laughs> That's then people have also been whinging about like stuff over the last few months. And I have been terribly like non... I got no sympathy because mm. like... Less than usual anyway. Wow. Yeah. Like little silly things and they're whinging about like why they might have slept in and stuff. Like, <laughs> come on. I was sitting in a hospital room. I was hanging just to exercise. Yep. And it was like, nah, you just should have got out of bed. Yep. Like, there's a, there's a right and a wrong there. Um, but now it's, yeah, I'm, I'm sort of, it's new ground. It's like PBs every day. Which is great. How yeah. exciting. It's, it's like what I was feeling. Like. <laughs> I, I, I often wake up in the morning and like you do, look at yourself in the mirror and be mm. like, let's do it today. You know? <laughs> <laughs> let's get it. <laughs> That's so good. Well, it's good that you're obviously now on the, uh, the. It, it's been such a, I've been you know checking in with you, it's such a shit journey with you mm. just actually not knowing how long it's going to be, how long you're out for, all this sort of stuff. But it sounds like towards the last couple of weeks, you've been able to get a little bit more of like a timeline and um, you know, at least train a little bit more and just yeah. get it started, which was like the whole thing because you couldn't do anything. Yeah, and your your mental state 
is is all over the shop purely because you not don't have that general endorphin release from yeah. what my body said. How did you find through. that? Like you just found that so difficult or? Uh, midway through, it was just like, oh, I'm, I'm obviously not well, so I need to respect this. But then like the last week when I wound up back in hospital, then the days were getting really long where I was like, is this ever going to end? Yeah. Like I, I'd passed so much time already and it's like, okay, I felt like I've rested enough for 10 years now. Yeah. Um, so yeah, I mean, you learn a lot when you go spend a bit of time with the health system and you learn where the health system is corrupt and <laughs> yeah. where it could be a lot better, where it could, you know, where it's also very good. Um, you know, I had some, the nursing staff were the other highlight in the hospitals. So they sort of keep it, keep it all positive going, and they're yeah. changing over so often that you get that, that boost, but you have to be quite stern with specialists and doctors because they're seeing so many people and they're just doing their rounds. So the fact that you're a professional athlete, they don't really care. Yep. You know, so then that's no, nothing on them, but for you as the athlete or you as that, the person who really needs their foot to, to do the day to day, very right? quick, a, quick period of time to yeah. compete. And I'm not 20 anymore. So I don't have forever to just be sitting around on, in a hospital bed. I had to be quite, you know, what what can I do? How much can I do per day? Like, let's list this out. Make sure I had everyone on the same page. Yep, yep. Um, and then I just twist that a bit. When yeah, I absolutely, home. as you would. Yeah, yeah. I just find <laughs> you got to find what work, what is working. Well, what work? Well, I know something that you were doing in your uh, hospital room <laughs> was you had the resistance bands. You were like had like little weights, all this yeah. little stuff. What you're doing in there? You got to enter, enter a bodybuilding comp next, I reckon. Yeah, because I got that arthritic uh, underlying like autoimmune issue. I was not able to take the medication for that it's ankylosing spondylitis, is what it's called. So it's like a you joint my spine's trying to fuse essentially, um, but all my other joints are affected if I just sit still for if too you long. Stop. Yeah. But it's like anybody should, you know, you go into a hospital, they put you in there to elevate the foot or the leg, right? That's the main reason. But if you lay for so long, you actually get you can get sores, right? So I was like, oh, well, any chance I get, I'm going to stay mobile because once I get out of here, I need to be moving again. So I was just like, uh, yeah, had resistant bands from every like sort of harness point in the on Every the curtain thing curtain. that was up there, the side yeah, of the bed. Yeah, they always yeah, come yeah. in like, <laughs> I'm laying on the ground like doing, you know, just a plank or something and the nurse would come in, oh my God, are you okay? Because obviously people have falls quite often yeah. in hospital, right? But I was you know, quite dependent. I could still move around. And after the surgeries, I couldn't for a few days, but, you know, I find a way to, to at least keep moving so my, my back and shoulders didn't feel like they were seizing up. Absolutely. Yeah. Well, it kind of worked out all right because I had my 89-year-old nana that was also in the same hospital as you. So I would uh, go and check That's in with her, go and right. check in with you, go, yep, great. Go see my two old people in the life. Great. They're all they're all still living. Wonderful. Uh, That's good. <laughs> well, yeah, whilst you were bloody... <laughs> Putting on this uh, this amazing engagement, which took you three months, right? You yes. were talking me through it's coming in sweaty palms every day. <laughs> like, oh, I think I'm going to go down this avenue. Yeah, now. yeah, 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 yeah. Hey, it all turned out very well. <laughs> it did, it turned yeah, out well real good. So, what does your like next little bit look like for comps and stuff? Mm. Like, how? <laughs> what? What's the first one? Still don't know. You've got to get up to what point? Like, what's it look like? Um, oh, I haven't actually spoken to anyone about this, but the Bus Exclusive. 100 is in. May, start of May. So I'll literally start back in Busso again. Sick. Um, from a race point of view uh, and then go on to, so Ironman Cairns um, is the middle of June. Yep. So that's- That'll be the first Ironman. That's the first the real race yep. that now all the preparation will be towards that. Yep. And then I'll just race locally a fair bit over the next few months, just get get it handed to me. Just let the ego cop, a, yep. cop it on the return. I just need to get back and be specific. And not sort of just train easy for too long because you do that and you don't actually progress. Definitely. So. Well, I think that even like exactly what you said there, that's something that I even just coach to uh, so many just, you know, regular day people that I get to work with, whether it's weight loss, you start and get into the gym, that sort of thing. Instead of sort of thinking about the big picture mm. and with yours, it's obviously an event. For theirs, it might be losing weight or yeah. being healthy or whatever. You don't think of it like putting your head up like this. You got to really narrow it down into what you can do today and what the actual realistic things are that you can tick off today and yep. around you right now, rather than thinking that big picture too much. Yeah, if people, it's just a big like mis misinterpretation. If you go and set a three month goal to achieve this, whether it be weight loss or you know competition or 
some kind of performance. If you look at it as three months, you'll never tick as many boxes as you could if you look at it per day. Yep. Right. So it's for me at the moment, it's like I need even the program's loose, but every day I got to wake up, see how it feels, how long I can put in a bike shoe for. You know, I'm still on antibiotics. So if I wake up and you feel like they've messed me around a little bit, obviously things need to change that day, but yeah. you still need to try and be adaptable um, to still get enough done where you're progressing forward. Yep. Like you don't want to take going for me going back to hospital is going backwards. Yeah. So I just need to keep going forward now and listen to what the body's doing daily. And uh, yeah, it's it's definitely yes, it's a three or four month goal, which is short term, but it's really day to day. Absolutely. Yep. And I've got this other one to ask you as well that I've written down. Is it true that the first meal that you asked for after having your surgery, you were like, please someone bring me a homemade garden salad with raw salmon. Who the raw. fuck Who raw. the fuck asked for that coming no. out of a sur- uh. like a major surgery going, no, don't worry about the nice menu they've got there with the chips and the burgers and the nuggets and the fries, whatever you like. No, no, no. Bring me the salmon with the... Uh. I was like, you are different, bro. Like, uh, <laughs> that's when you were in Japan and I could just see like you were just getting fat away, <laughs> deep frying yeah I did come out of that second surgery my wife was uh, where I was in recovery for a while so I didn't actually get to see her but she baked salmon and brought a salad in so it was in the room when I, I couldn't think of anything where it still smelled <laughs> it like lovely. that in there the yeah. next day and I was like what is that <laughs> smell you know, it was just my dinner from last night I was like what was it oh my god bro you are built seriously yeah, different yeah. but <laughs> It's delicious from what I remember. <laughs> well, mate, it's good. Good to hear all of that. And uh, obviously, real keen to hear all the progressions as we go through for the next little uh, patch for mm. you. And Bustards and 100, you're not, by the way, off the top of the show as well. You are not suckering me into shit. No, no, podcast. you're done. You're yeah, completely done. I'm You've done. sold your gear. Yep, yeah, 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 I'm done. I'm done. I'm yep, done. Yeah. And anything that you shredding. do say, yeah, anything you do say, <laughs> I'm just going to edit out of this one. All right. So making sure we cut all that stuff out. <laughs> just back to line to people about how they, what they can eat, what they can't eat. Yeah. Hey guys, Dan from Backchat here. While Jared's mum is a real doctor, this segment is for entertainment purposes only. For specific medical conditions, make sure you seek the advice of your own doctor. So Matt, um, you've got a sister, right? Yes, yep, two. Yep. two. Two sisters, right. Two. So I'm sure like growing up, did they ever read the uh, the Dolly magazines? Did they ever read those? Surely. They, had, they would have had to. It would have been some laying around the house. That. My sisters definitely did have some. And uh, like, you know, our friends are friends. It was like a thing. And inside the Dolly uh, the magazine, there was this little tear out section. And that was like all the naughty 18 plus, you know, sex questions. And this was before the internet. Like this was like, you know, the whole thing. This is how you learn all your sex ed stuff was through the Dolly magazine. Was it? Well, <laughs> it was, well, it was a bit. There's no internet. Like, you know, like if you Maybe had a question, the magics. You, send, no. <laughs> you send it, you send it to Dolly Doctor and then Dolly Doctor writes you back. So what we thought we'd do, right? Because I don't know if you know this, Matt. I'm actually genetically a doctor. Uh, genetically, I am a doctor. And I thought what we do <laughs> is we get my mum, Dr. Karen Mad- Majda, Dr. Magic. Woohoo! Do we come in for this new segment? So we haven't got the Dolly Doctor we have got Dr. Magic and we want to do the same thing. We want to have people send in all their health questions. There is nothing. Oh, this is a safe space, right? This is a full set. There's no judgment of anything that comes up for any of these questions. We want listeners to send stuff in uh, and we want to, you know, help everybody out there with all of their... True. a safe space, but this is just information of a general nature. Of course. If you need individual help please see your medical please book in <laughs> please book in for act for an actual appointment is what she is what she's saying exactly. this is just a freebie that you get a little bit yeah. of stuff from so anyway but for this segment i've actually um got a little um little little intro can we play the intro Dr. Magic, give me the news. I've got a bad case of vaginal thrush and lumps and balls, and we need you, Dr. Magic. Yeah, Dr. Magic. All right, so oh, I love it. How'd you like that? We got our own thing for That's our first little intro. We're done with that. I like That's it. That's a very deep voice for vaginal thrush. Yeah, I like it. So, again, we want everybody to be, like, sending on in their questions, and I've gone back through because this, you know, this show's obviously coming out. Before we get into sort of people sending on in, I went back into the old, the, the, the depths of the Dolly, you know, magazines. 
Uh, can well, you have them. There's lots on you Reddit. Still them under your bed. Where I may, so may not. I'm still reading them every now and then. But yeah, anyway, <laughs> but we're going into the depths. We're finding these questions, right? And this is what I've got. So I've got a few stuff to ask you, Mum. Um, and uh, sorry, Doctor Doctor Maggie. And you know, just want to hear your yeah. thoughts. And you know, we sure. just want to help people. All right. So well, I'll go first. I'll go first. All right. <laughs> so um, question number one. Funny Why that. do some mornings I wake up with an erection? Why do some mornings you don't? No, you do. That's good. That you should. I, you should wake up with an erection, a healthy young man like yourself. Every Unless day. You're drunk too much, or you're stressed, or you're working out for a marathon, yeah. or <laughs> any of well, those sorts of things you, can yeah. well, Does it, can, it really? I can chime in here big time. Wow. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 So I was. Tr- am I allowed to go down this path? Yeah. 100%. This is what it's here Because what, yeah. what the doctor's here is saying, what the real magic's saying mm-hmm. is correct. But at 24, when I first started the sport, I was overtraining. Mm. And it wasn't happening, so I went to the doctor and my testosterone levels. So they just do a blood test. Yeah, that's it. And, and testosterone it, levels were at like real what a sixty to seventy year old would be. Wow. And I was like, Oh well, can you just inject me with testosterone? But then that's performance enhancing. Right. So they'll yeah, like course, just back yeah. it off for a bit and it will come back to life. But that's wow. very hard to do. You just gotta find yeah. a balance. Well if your body is if crazy. your body's physically stressed, you're yeah. not gonna be producing those sorts of they get enough testosterone. Yeah. Absolutely. That's, are we yeah. talking about hormones here? Wow, yeah. that's yeah. crazy. Yeah. That's actually yeah. why I didn't know that they could it's do true. that from yeah. endurance stuff. So, so so it's a very healthy thing. Um, it's a sign of good health and as mm. men age, that may not happen, that they may not um, have a morning erection and of course if they develop other chronic health conditions. Yep. So like, what you're saying, if I don't wake up with a boner once in like as in like one no, day. Mum here. <laughs> Sure. It's Dr. Don't Magic. Be boner. professional. All right. Be professional. It's Dr. Magic. The word boner yeah. is not allowed. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. My, so if you don't wake up with an erection every morning. Well, that's okay. That's all right. Every now and then's okay. Every now not and then it's completely fine. Okay. But, yeah. But it's a good measure if someone comes in with, say, erectile problems. If they, if they actually say they still get a morning erection every now and then, you know that it's probably more, more uh, could be more psychological than actually a physical problem. Wow, yeah. I love it. Mm. Matt, questions? My turn. Your turn. My question here. <laughs> what, Matt that, hasn't seen any of these questions is before I handed him the page either. So this is uh, as if I'm asking from a female right. perspective. Yeah. What? <laughs> <laughs> yes. <laughs> Say it. <laughs> Would you like what? Me to no, this? it's okay. I can do this. <clears throat> Why are my nipples so hairy? I always get a few really long hairs around my nipples. <laughs> And seem to grow back fast. Why is this? I have often wondered that. Why is this? <laughs> Why is this? Well, it's just normal. You've got hair follicles around the nipples. Um, men don't and talk women to me. have them as well. Um, Look and at Matt and when it you can say just that. be more. It can be more sort of genetic. Who has you know some people more hairy than others. Um, so yeah. So a lot of women do in fact have. Is there a reason why, like, that particular area, though, that why that would... Say, like, and moles as well. well you know how, like, a mole... It's is an area that needs protection. So, anywhere that needs protection on your body, you can have hair. Yeah, so it's just, it's little, just normal. And it's probably, it's probably mm. more hormonal. Uh, some hormones involved with that as well. Yeah. Interesting. But so a lot of women do, well, may wax or use mm. other treatments on, on hair. Mm. Wow, wow. All right, levels. I've got another one. Um, what should I do if a condom slips off during sex? Do you Except have to for be, panic. Do you have to be a doctor to answer this? <laughs> yeah, well, I would... This is from the, do- this is from back. This is what the dolly people want to hear. Well, I would definitely withdraw and make... And as, uh, often, often, <laughs> often... And um, remove your... Um, um, <laughs> yeah, sorry. Yeah, medical terms. Yeah, yeah. Your remove, penis. Re- that's the one. Yeah. <laughs> and of, of, if you haven't actually um, climaxed, then that should be okay. However, the young woman or older woman concerned should consider whether she needs a morning after pill or another form of contraception in that case. Love it. Good yeah. advice. Yeah. And make sure you got the condom out. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, don't leave the condom behind. Well, it's the question was, what do yeah. I do if it slips off? Oh, oh, mad panic. Mad panic is the answer. Yeah, all right. an addition. <laughs> Matt. All right, back to me. I have a stomach bug. Oh, is that right? No, a stoma bag. I have a stoma bag in a place due to having a part of my bowel removed. Mm. My boyfriend keeps... I'm a female again. My boyfriend keeps insisting on having sex with the opening of my stoma but it is starting to get warm and looks red. Is mm. it okay for him to have sex with me in my stoma? That's uh, hectic, but yeah. I'd love to know. Well, <laughs> I, I, I would say no, although I don't I have any great expert. That's fine, I'm just no. not expert with, with, with <laughs> stomas and sex. However, yeah, I think there's plenty of other orifices. I think wow. I should leave that one alone. <laughs> I like this. Yeah. 
just sum that up. More op. All right, good. Good to know. There is more options. All right, well, cool. Look, it could, right, cause, could cause infection. It could cause. Yeah, yeah it exactly. could cause infection Jeez. and discomfort. Yeah, and irritation. I don't think that's a. That's um. Yeah, I think her, she should tell her boyfriend where to get no. off. Really. Yeah. yeah. So yeah. stoma hole. No. 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 no go. go have a we shower. No go. <laughs> no go. <laughs> No deal. All right, mom, last one, last one. Um, can you get surgery to change the colour of your eye? I don't like the colour of mine. Yeah, it's a very dangerous thing to do. There is, um, around the world, there is clinics that do this. It's very no. dangerous, can can lead to blindness. Yeah, so the best thing if you what do... What are they actually, what is involved in that procedure? Well, actually, I don't know how they do it, but they actually would, I think they would actually chemically change your iris colour, and that's very dangerous. So yeah. is your eye colour, so it's it, determined by... a chemical that you've got yeah in well, you it, well car. your car color is genetically determined um and yeah and then of course to actually change that you know it's a bit like dyeing your hair mm-hmm. but in, it's in your eyes it's just not a good thing you can wear colored contacts if you want to you know go out for a night with blue eyes or brown eyes if you've it got makes the more other. sense it seems, yeah. seems easier doesn't it yeah it just option. seems easier absolutely and most people would be doing that these days yeah very very dangerous to actually have a procedure done though would not recommend it if you want to keep your eyesight I love it. Well, Mum, that's episode one of uh, Dolly Doctor, <laughs> Dr. Magic. Thank you very much. Uh, anyone worries. wants to find out more, where, where can they find you? Queensgate Medical Centre in Countyville? <laughs> Yes, they can. However, I'm sure hopefully you've got your own GP and, and very happy to go and see a GP. Oh, exactly. I'm too busy, obviously. <laughs> I'm too <laughs> busy. Booked <laughs> out. Go somewhere else. No, very happy to <laughs> see And don't come on a if Thursday. You wait, if you want to wait for four weeks to get an appointment, yeah, yeah. No, she's very, very good. But uh, we, we want whatever your health questions are to send them on in and we're going to get uh, Dr. Magic to answer them each week. So um, over at fatchat at backchatstudios.com.au, send on in your questions, hit me up on socials. This is a safe space. We want to get you know, the, the help and the advice that you need. Uh, and uh, mum, thanks very much for uh, Dr. Magic. My thank pleasure. you very much. Nice, nice to chat, Matt. Thanks for sitting on the couch for me. <laughs> All right, now, this is the part of the show, Matt, that uh, I bring up like a little topic. It might be about, you know, nutrition or exercise or whatever it is, but it's just to try to help all the people out there that are listening to Fat Chat be a little bit better each day, get a little bit of some, you know, different perspectives or uh, think about any of those areas differently so they can improve their health. So one that I always get asked about is either what type of exercise is best for losing weight mm. or how much exercise do I need to lose weight? So I would love to hear your opinion. Let me chuck mine out first. This has been my general thing that we can sort of discuss away. But how I always say it, this is not necessarily, this is for everyday people, by the way, a better form of exercise to do than another one. So say if you're you know, committing to doing weights per day or doing running or cardio per day or playing sport, whatever it is, that is actually probably, in my opinion, a lot more important than choosing this is the most optimal one to do for weight loss, for burning calories or whatever. And start to think more of exercise and activity as something that you do for enjoyment, getting you moving a little bit more. Sure, it burns calories, but building muscle, feel good about yourself, bring your confidence up, all that sort of stuff, social um, stuff with sport. So that's how I would always sort of coach that. But I'd love to hear your opinion on it. Mm-hmm. What do you think about either the best exercise selection for losing weight or is exercise alone or just doing exercise? How much exercise do you have to do to lose weight? Massive topic. Yeah. Right. Obviously, is a lot of people overthink it and then never really get... Commit to anything. To anything. Yeah. yeah. Or they just try and do it all at once. So, the, the first advice I would give to anybody is don't change your diet and start seven-day-a-week exercise at once. Correct. Right. So, do one thing first. Yes. Right. If it's exercise, keep eating as you are until... Because if you've got no fitness, right, if you haven't exercised for a long time and you've got no fitness, your body... Uh, has got to go through some ad- adaptions, right, to what you're trying to do, right? You're going to get DOMS. So you're going to get really sore after working out. You're going to be tired. For weeks, You're yeah. going to be losing time out of your day. 100%, all that sort of stuff. right? Yeah. So it's like you want to make sure, okay, if you if you had a terrible diet and you were just like not eating and then you'd binge, you need to change that. And so just be regular with your eating. Yep. Like I always say to everyone, like, you know, if you can eat every three to four hours, everyone always says when they see someone training for like a – a bodybuilding show or something, oh my God, they're just forever eating. Mm. But have a look at them. Yep. Right? So the results show. Like if you eat regularly, your metabolism's going to increase. So How much do be, you eat? Do you eat pretty regularly? Uh, it's, it's hard. If you're training three, four sessions a day, 
then it's around More. the session. Yeah. It's like it's got to work to make sure you don't say go do something with full guts. Like yep. You don't want to hit a run session and, and have eaten an hour ago a full meal. So it's probably becomes more of a snacking thing. But at the moment, it's every three hours Like because my sessions are only very short. I reckon mine's like every hour and a half too. Yeah. That's how often I eat. I, I eat all the time. You know, and you can just be selective with your portions then. Exactly. Right. Yeah. The, yeah. You know, I know a lot of people favor this intermittent fasting. If you're unfit, don't do it. Nah. No, I Sorry, I, don't, I know there's probably people telling you out there to do it, but if you have no fitness and you go, okay, I'm going to get healthy and not eat till lunchtime. You've got no energy. Yeah, but your body's going through such a massive adaption that yep. you actually will put weight on, yep. right? And you'll get tired and you'll get very hangry. Yep. And no one likes a hangry person. No. Nah. And also, when you're hangry, you not you don't sleep good. Yeah. You're not nice to be around. You're not relaxing when you are just chilling at home. So you don't have as much energy when it comes to either cooking more food yeah. or uh, exercising, whatever it might be. Yeah, and then things like cheat days, like yeah. you got to earn them over a while, right? The Rock does them weekly, but he's been pumping iron for forever, right? He's enormous and they're full of drugs, right? So yeah. it's, but that's what his job requires, right? So yes, you can have treat yourself every now and again, but you know, you've alluded to some really good things in some of your posts where like <laughs> you can choose better alternatives. Yep. Right, I don't like sugar free because I don't like stuff that's made to taste like something else. Mm-hmm. But that's me just. But that's you as an athlete. Me as, as well. a thought process. Yeah, right? yeah, yeah, yeah. And also, like you yep. is very different from Deborah from Caddy yeah. Vale that's forty hey, and Deb. got you know two kids and <laughs> yeah, is fifteen yeah. kilos overweight and just wants to be healthier. So very different. Yeah. yeah. My sister's a dietitian, and we've had these conversations, and yeah. she doesn't help me at all because we would clash too much. But she also knows her space is different to sport, right? So. She would encourage what you say, like choose the alternative which doesn't have huge amount, excessive amount of calories or dense amount of calories. You know, a lot of people, you're bombarded with like, okay, gluten-free, vegan. VMO-free. Yeah, these sort of things, right? whatever they want to Be very careful because fat has a lot of calories. Yeah. That would be the only thing you'd say to people. Peanut butter and things that then create these foods, they're really calorie dense. I would eat them going into a race. Yep. Because they're so dense in calories, because you're trying to load energy for the days leading in. So it's like, really, the cleaner you can eat, the better. Yep. You know, keep it super simple, which is boring for a lot of people. But if you do it for one week, right, get to the end of that week, do it for one more week. Exactly. Well, I think it's sort of what you said at the start. It's yeah. about slowly turning up the heat with all this stuff, whether it's exercise yep. or diet. If you jump straight in and you go, cool. I'm doing this program and I'm following this yeah. and following that. You, it's 10 days, two weeks, you're burnt. As soon as it. we overthink it. You're done. We, like that's we what happens. Out of it. Exactly. But it's if you just do a little bit of yep. an adjustment every day, whether it's on the food side, mm-hmm. whether it's on the exercise side, that's when it actually starts to click and actually works over a long period of time because otherwise you're just burnt out and you're miserable and then you have this experience that every time that you went to exercise or every time you went to diet, yeah. that it didn't fucking work like last time. But it's because how you're approaching it is probably too too fast, too soon. Yeah. Calm the jets down a little bit and make it a little bit more steady. Yeah, or too much information. If people yeah. are being trained by Body Magic yeah. and you have a nutrition plan, yeah. don't Google, follow that. Yeah. You know, that's exactly yeah. That is the number one. Like if you've got too many people, information from too many sources, you'll get confused, you'll overthink it, and then you're out of the game. Yeah. It's like listen to if you get a coach or a trainer or someone who's got a bit of a meal plan for you. Just follow that template and you've got to follow it go one week at a time, but you don't can't really assess how you're traveling until six weeks in. Yep. From, I agree. from the exercise point of view, it's really interesting for me when I get like, it tends to be those sort of younger guys come from say a footy background or an explosive sport background um, and then they come in and they don't think they can get lean from doing endurance, you know, slow running, riding, and then they all turn around after three or four months and like yeah this is quite amazing yep. like you really can f- look and feel great because you're so when you do cardio you don't have to do it flat out 
No. That's the biggest thing. Which like, is probably what, I was probably a little bit more like what you were just talking yep. about just then as, as to my background was up until doing our yep. stuff recently, it was real explosive stuff um, and wasn't, you know, a lot of that really just low heart rate, consistent mm. training, but you can do a nice little balance of both. And it's so nice to do a balance of both because yep. if you're just in the gym, oh my God, you feel like, you know, you just feel a bit stocky, a bit tight everywhere. Yep. Um, but then if you just do, I was finding towards the end of that stuff, if I was just doing cardio, I was feeling a little bit weak and, you know, just a bit frail from my usual self. Yep. But then if you just do a little bit of both, it's really, really nice. Yeah. yeah cardio is great for well. length, Yeah, you know, for muscle length. So, a lot of people are, oh, but that's running. It's like, you don't have to run fast. No. You can really run slowly. Like, you know, if, you, if you're worried about people watching you do it, just go to a park and just, you know, f- find a route that's not, not going to be monotonous. But there's so many different options, but you don't have to look at it like you're doing it every day. If you do mix things up where you do some interval style sessions, some steady state, call that cardio if you want. If you're a good swimmer, do that. If you don't mind sitting on a bike, do that. But it's got to be for a sustained period of time and you yep. can watch TV when you do it. But you've got to keep your heart rate just steady just so you're not at resting. Um, and then, yeah, of course, all the gym work. You know, you speak about, I guess, you've, your, your claim to fame is, is working with a number of the AFL boys in, in their off-season, mm. right? Call it an off-season, but it's important now in any elite sport, you really don't switch off too much. Yeah. Otherwise, you really get left behind, right? There's always a young, some young whippersnapper coming who never stops training, right? So... It's important that they, they step out of footy season, they don't want to run. So you just give them a different stimulus, but enough to Work motivate them. Different things. Yeah, and a bit yeah, of stability, a yeah. bit of strength to then aid the running when it kicks in. Yep. Uh, that's at the elite level, but it's the same process for somebody just trying to get off the couch. Absolutely. Right. Don't have to just get, go and burn yourself straight away because you, when you're really sore, you don't want to go back the next day. Yep. So the idea is you don't have to be sore to be progressing. Absolutely. Yeah. No, I love that. So to sum that up, it's about exercise selection and finding what you enjoy doing yep. is probably way more important. you got to complement it with your food stuff. But again, doing something too hard and just mm. diving straight in, it's going to make you want to jump out that pool pretty quickly. Metaphorically, not an actual pool. You can swim or run or whatever you want to do. <laughs> yeah. uh, but uh, doing it slowly, turning the heat up in all those little areas nice and slowly and steady, that's what's actually what's going to make you enjoy the whole process a lot more. Yeah, and don't be scared of carbs. Yep. Your brain needs no, them. No, you need them. You, yeah. Your brain, there's only fuel your brain works off, right? Yeah. So it's okay. You're not trying to become and uh, live in the mountains and no. fast for a week at a time, right? So just you just have little portions of it. Um, but bread and rice is is also very good to add to a salad um, because if you just cut straight to salads, which is a normal thinking, yep. I'm just going to have salads. Miserable. You're and you so don't tired. have enough. You just got no energy, right? You're just... If you need to do a bit of exercise at the end of the day, you always talk yourself out of it. And you got 10 days, two weeks of doing that, and yeah. then you're back to square one because that's not how you do it. Yeah. yeah. And like anybody, like in the morning, you don't have, when you wake up, you don't have time to think about exercising. Do your training in the morning. If you, get, if you give yourself 12 hours to think about it, 90% of the time you won't do it in the Arvo. That is actually, that's a good, that's a real good point. So if you too, set I'm your a alarm, bit like that. I'm yeah. a bit like, if it gets done in the morning, I know. it doesn't happen. Lazy magic, I yeah. called you. <laughs> <laughs> We'll cut that bit out, all right? <laughs> all right, Matt. Now, this is the other uh, fat chat mailbag section, right? So, this is where uh, big fans of the show, like they're like, they're hanging off every word of fat chat every week. They send in either Hello, questions, Magic. yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> questions or, uh, or topics or whatever. Uh, and we had a few in, but there was one that came in and I thought, you know what? This pretty much just, this could just be the whole segment today. Uh, it's from. Uh, S-T-E underscore V-I-E, Stevie. Uh, and it's, what celebrities do you think are on steroids? So good. So what I've done is I've got a, a list of, I've just got five names here. And I'd love for us to discuss whether we think they're on steroids or not. Okay. What do you think? Yeah, I'm into this. You ha- yeah. you're, happy, you're happy for this? Yeah. yeah, yeah, cool. yeah. You're not going to meet any of these people? No, they'd or... be happy for us to talk about it. Yeah, yeah, cool, cool. Yeah, okay. I don't know them, but yeah. So we first one we've got, we've got Zac Efron. Mm. Steroids, not steroids. I think for Baywatch, yep. You'll find most celebrities have to, if they get a role, a certain role, and they need to be a certain size. Let's get some trend. They'll yep. get a trainer and they'll do it properly. Yep. But let's... Uh, I think so too, because yeah. he was ripped as yeah, in yeah, Baywatch, yeah. like proper ripped. And then he's doing another one at the moment. It's right. like that wrestling movie. Right. And he looks, he doesn't look as cut and as lean. Not big. Way bigger. Right. Like he is huge compared to yeah, when yeah. he was previously. But I think definitely Baywatch, he was like... 
shredded, Rip, shredded rippling in. Yeah. A, Not in, saying he didn't work life. hard. No, no doubt. But you, yeah, you'll find that most, and they would be honest about that, like that to get, you know, in a role to get you to that to. point. Yeah. You know, they don't have a lot of time. Yeah. So it's like, what can you do to amplify and get there quicker? Yeah, yeah. I agree. I agree. All right. So Zach Efron. Steroids. Yeah. Maybe not currently. Not, yeah. Definitely Baywatch. Steroids. Steroids. Yeah. All right. This one. Under supervision. I already know the answer to this one. The Rock. <laughs> All the steroids. The WWE. Yeah. The WWE <laughs> is like, it's riddled with it. It's their profession, right? Like it was here in Perth the other week. It's it was a good. Huge fan I actually base. went. Of did, course you did. did. Did you ever watch it? Uh, not here, growing up. but I've watched it. Yeah. 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 Mm. I never really watched it growing up. Right. I don't think I've ever watched a full length one ever, but we went just for the fun. It was pretty fun. It yeah. was pretty good. They but know how to. They've, it's a massive industry, right? Yeah. So they've, you know, well done to the WWE and F and whatever the WWs are. Yeah. Um, but I would think most most of the blokes definitely. I kind of think, which is funny because I was thinking about it for this, that I think that the ones back in, so The Rock is back on there now mm. and somehow he is bigger than what he was now <laughs> yeah. at whatever 50 that he is yeah, yeah. than what he was at 30 yeah. like in yeah. the prime of everything. He looks way better now. He was more of a wrestler look then whereas yes, now yeah. he's like... Just shred yeah. when you When you often get that real um, vein pump. Yep. Like that's Constantly, it's it tends to be a sign because certain steroids will actually eat away at like the sheath of um, fat on on this under and the skin. Is that why the the veins just go... sits over the vein? Yeah, yeah. So you like your skin sort of molds over the veins nicer, and so there's like a you you can tend to tell. Um, you know, other performance enhancing drugs are different, but steroids, yeah, definitely. That it's I reckon it'd be in the contract. It. Yeah, you, you know, reckon? I reckon they'd be like, you need to look like this. Get there. They're not tested. There's no doping in no, these. No, exactly. It's well, I reckon it's probably more like you kind of touched on it before. It's like, all right, cool. I'm getting paid whatever, $10 million to be yep. uh, the, the rock in whatever movie. Yep. I'm probably going to take steroids for $10 million. I'll get a like, doctor. I'll, I'll get a doctor, a doctor every day. Money and we'll do it. You know, they would do it properly. Yep, I agree. And I agree. cycle off it properly. Next yeah. one, Hugh Jackman. This is, I, I thought about this and I'm like, oh, I don't know. Because in my mind, I'm almost like, I don't want to know that Luke Jack, uh, sorry, Hugh Jackman uh, took steroids. He, yeah. he seems too nice. He's always been a big unit. Yeah. I don't know. Not that I've followed too much of his stage stuff early on, but. Yeah. You sure? You know, weren't there yeah. front row Broadway? He went to Whopper too, didn't he? Yeah, I think so. Yeah, yeah. we can't say, no. <laughs> it's West Australian somewhere. <laughs> Any means West Australian, so. No, I don't know. He's Yes, he's got massive pipes. He, I think like Wolverine, he was mm. pretty big and pretty juicy and pretty ripped, but it didn't, doesn't look like to me that it, I feel like you could get there without. I feel he like went on natty. a big journey for that and he, it's quite cool. He, I've actually, I don't know when I did, somewhere in my travels, watched him talk about the training for that and that was a long process yeah. for him to get there and the hours they get up and train. Um, yeah, I, I would say no. I'm I, saying no too. Yeah, I think he's... Genetically, doesn't look at like when you physiology wise, it looks quite natural. Yeah, um, you can tend to tell like the rock looks like a, a beacon. Yeah, well, he looks like a rock. Like- <laughs> Not saying he's on it all the time. This is what people get confused with. You don't have to take steroids like twelve months of the year. I know. Have off. to be very careful. Yep. Yeah, you know. So you got to look after your heart. Number one. Yeah. Which will that'll impact it massively. So we're going Hugh Jackman. No steroids. No, no steroids. Yeah. Uh, Chris Hemsworth. Steroids. No steroids. You first. Oh. Tough. It is, hey. Yep. Maybe once or twice. Mm. Maybe. Yeah. Just a couple. Couple of aisles. <laughs> yeah. Laugh, not many. Laughs from the background. There. <laughs> the Chris Hemsworth fans. <laughs> uh, she's in his back there he, looking he at the computer. He has to have been on steroids <laughs> for the um the 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 latest Thor one where he's like in the chains and he's like. But also the other thing is maybe they just do it special effects he's, too. He's a big dude too. Yeah. Like he's yeah he's like built the same he's like size six as four or six five as yeah. well he's really tall yeah I mean the Rock's a big guy too but it's a different pump right whereas you know and he came from wrestling from that scene yes whereas Chris Hemsworth maybe not I mean it depends on their movie contracts it's like when the guys get a movie contract and they need to be like 150 kilo yeah and they got to go and put on all this weight my only thing though Chris Hemsworth he's got this app called Center I'm like you just want me to buy your centered meal plan but it's you know <laughs> but you're but you're eating all the steroids or mm. whatever you do with the steroids no I'm gonna say no mm, no no I reckon I reckon for one of the top for the movie yes hunt for that right. one Thor movie hundred okay. percent he yeah. is the latest one latest one latest one yeah Adley yeah. Portman 
Yeah, totally worth uh, it. I'll be honest, I haven't one? seen it. I okay. just know that I just know that right. I've seen enough of it to go, that man is He's... taking heaps of trend. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> All right, last one. This is also a bit of a 50 50 one. Mark Wahlberg. He loves to train. He does, but he's and but he's also way older than what you think he is. He's yep. like fifty something. He's like in his fifties, and he's still looking good. Like he has to be on the TRT at least, which is testosterone replacement therapy. If, if I would anyway. think most, a lot of them would be like even you know if you look at Stallone and yeah, and Arnie to a degree. Like Arnie's documentary that was yeah out, that was really he good. speaks about that. Yeah, that it's was open, really good. Right? It's not like it was a myth. They don't take it if you're tested, and could be punished for it. Right, so it's like. Fair game. Movies, yeah, it really is game. in their world. It's like, don't aspire to look like them, you know, and don't also don't aspire to want to take the steroids because no. the impacts on the heart. Like these guys Huge. have got millions of dollars, and they've to got invest doctors, in doctors that are literally right. on there all the time, and they've got full teams and everything. Mm, Marky Mark, maybe maybe a couple of times, probably yeah. for fun. Probably. <laughs> Mate, he seems to be like he pops up in all sorts of just movies for his F forty five photo yeah, shoots. Maybe. I reckon, yeah, yeah. probably. He's big just, at the moment. He's pretty big at the he's moment. He's doing some stuff for must be for a movie at the moment. Yep. Isn't he? Yeah, yeah, yeah. He's back on, back oh, on. So right that. now, yes, yeah. definitely, okay, yes. as we speak, hundred percent, yes. Yep. <laughs> okay. <laughs> all right. There's a couple of quick ones. Um, some for this is personally for you, um, Matt. For someone that wants to start to run, we kind of touched on it before. Mm. Full beginner, where do they start? I'm talking just one or two short little tips. Put your joggers on. Yep. Like it. Just get out the door. Fucking like it a lot. Yeah. I like it a lot. First step is putting the shoes Put on. Put the shoes on. Yep. Yeah. Don't need to get... Don't overthink it. Just go out the door. Start walking first and see when it becomes a run. I'm going to make that a video this week. Yeah. Thanks. Um, headphones when you're running. <laughs> oh. What type? Because I know... Oh I know. Oh you, I know <laughs> that you give me shit all the time. For, it's a, oh my, I can't do oh, anything. Man. Even my headphones, he complains about. Tell me what's wrong with headphones. Go. <laughs> The sweat. Yep. You so smell them. I okay. Feel. Run. Okay. What type of headphones? Just what? use inner ear. There's so many good inner ear headphones. Just now. AirPods. You're Just air, that style, right? All the brands do them. Where well, they're noise cancelling too. But this here, if you want your head to weigh more, right? <laughs> you go for a run out on <laughs> the street. Mine's already pretty heavy. You go for a run out on the street. You're kidding yourself. They're for the aeroplane, <laughs> or maybe sitting at home, or in a call center, or something like that, right? <laughs> Let's keep it simple, right? Where you can still hear a bit of oncoming traffic. <laughs> Just a little bit. It's true. Yeah. It's very true. You very know, true. In the gym, when you're pumping iron, okay, it looks cool when you got to take a video of yourself, you put it around your around your neck, right? Body magic is all Thank about you. this, right? Yep. But white ones, hmm, not sure It was about specific because they were white. Okay, everybody, all right, I put a story up, right? And I had my regular AirPods and I also have these other ones that like hook behind sure. my ear sure. that I was wearing for riding because you yelled at me for... I had to throw them out. You were, you were, <laughs> you were annoying me and bombarding me with messages so much. Mid-run, I had to throw it out. Oh, wow. I'm running with my phone and ding, 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 ding because I put some story up, get those headphones off. And I'm like, oh my God, what do I do? And I throw them out. I yeah. threw them in a bin and kept running. <laughs> anyway, uh, but uh, I regularly have those ones, but I they were out of charge. They're in the car and I'm like, oh shit, what am I going to listen to? And I was like, oh, in my bag, I've got my tele um, center ones that I wear for all my client check-ins that I put on. It comes down, it's got the little headpiece here, the little microphone that uh, folds down in front of me like this. Uh, and I thought they're going to have to do. But the only problem I had with them as well, except for you bombarding me with the stuff, was if I like... I think I was doing some squats and I was, oh, I can't remember. I can't remember what I was doing. Anyway, I Never skip leg day. <laughs> <laughs> I had my hands above my head at some point and it's like flick the headphones and the telehealth, the, sorry, the telehealth, the telly thing kept coming down. The microphone kept coming down. So it looked like I was like, I had this like, piece on. You just the body gym. magic. How yeah. can I help you? <laughs> <laughs> Mid chin up or something. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. Oh, that's good. Um, and uh, last one, how do you stay motivated all the time? You can always do better, right? So for me, I'm still a long way off where I would would like to be. A lot of most people would be, right? Yep. There's very few people, even the ones that go and achieve it, want to achieve it again and again and again. So it's it's important to know that yes, you can you can be very good sometimes, but you can still go and be better and and change things and perfect things. So so don't be scared of change, but don't make it too often. Yep. Right. Otherwise, you never know how you're tracking or how something might be working. And uh, yeah, I mean, or, you know, spend a few months in hospital and start from scratch. So that's, yeah, that's been for me, 
I've had a real change of equipment this year as well. So I'm really motivated to get going, to go and Try enjoy it all. all. Yeah, Try to enjoy it all. And, you know, I was I shocked myself at the end of last year. And so now it's I'm motivated to go and see if I can do it again. Yep. Was it a fluke? Probably. Yeah. Nah, it's not, <laughs> it's not, it's not, it's not. And I'll tell you what, mate, the last little bit, the last two months, I've been telling you every time I say, just more chapters for the autobiography, <laughs> just more chapters for the documentary. Okay, it's just, it's all part yeah, of the yeah. plot. It was getting a little bit boring. You're winning everything. You won all the you won all the races last year. You won them all. Did yeah. the full sweep of the WA ones. Pretty boring. Let's put a little foot infection in there. See if you can do it. That's fun for everybody listening along. So I can't wait to see what the next uh, was, little chapter is for your stuff. I got to be honest, a quick one. Yeah. I was motivated last week. The WA yeah. Sports Awards were on. Yeah, and I wasn't nominated. And I won four state titles what? and broke a national record. Pardon me, what? And I was like, you know what? Who won? I'm not young anymore. I've had enough. Who won? Uh, oh, someone deserving winner, yeah. but like 20 people nominated. What? And I was like, I don't know worried about winning. I just want to be nominated. Yeah. <laughs> I was like, like, what, what more? Like, okay, I go and win Boston. And I don't think it would have changed it. So wow, it's like, because wow. I won it before and I wasn't nominated. Wow. So, so how do we, how do we, we got to make, make a yeah, petition about it? Win a world title. It. No, yeah. I just reckon world I'll win title. Kona. Let's win Kona and win see Kona. if they have to nominate me. That's good. That yeah, sounds good. Lose. All right. Yeah. Well, we'll be on the campaign for when I'm that motivated. happens as well. Thank you, we'll WA sure Sports. We make a lot of noise about it as well. Yeah. So, <laughs> <laughs> mate, thank you so much for coming and doing the episode with me today. Super fun as always. Anybody that wants to contribute, uh, email is fatchat at backchatstudios.com.au. Hit me up on um, socials, whatever as well. If you've got any questions to send on in, uh, we'll be back next week with another episode. Thank you very much, Matt Burton. Keep up the recovery and. Thank you, Match. The work never stops, mate. Keep going. See you next week. See you next week. <laughs> hey, Legends. Last little bit of the podcast today is a small little snippet and a highlight from an episode that I recorded with Perth Wildcat Ty Webster, who they had a real deep uh, run into the playoffs just recently. Um, Ty has been in the Wildcats for the last couple of seasons. He's one of my favorite players to watch. He is just hilarious. Even when he's like not got the ball in his hands, he's just so funny to watch and all the little things that he's doing uh, throughout the game. So we sat down with him, had a great full interview. We learned so much about him. Uh, and uh, that episode is actually coming out as a bonus little episode on Friday. But we've got a small little snippet here for you right now. Uh, make sure you subscribe, follow, like any of the uh, podcast episodes that you're enjoying a Fat Chat so far. Um, and look out for the episode, the full episode with Ty on Friday. It must be good having Corey here as well, your brother, who's yeah, also yeah. playing for the Wildcats. Because you've been... This is your second year for the Wildcats, right? Yeah, well, yeah, like this, I came like at the end of the season, so like what, yep. like one and a half, I guess. Like yep. after this will be one and a half. And when you signed for that half a year, was it like were you thinking, oh yeah, I want to be here for like a couple more seasons, or did that kind of come up in the off season? Or how did that kind of come about? Yeah, for sure. I was I was over playing in Europe, and I just kind of like was not enjoying playing basketball and stuff like that. Yeah, you know, I wanted to come back to Australia for a long time, but just kind of like wanted, you know, I was chasing the dreams, chasing, you know, I wanted to. You know, had some goals I wanted to accomplish over there before I came back and stuff like that. But yep. yeah, just like kind of didn't, wasn't enjoying the basketball side of it. And like everything else was good, you know, living living over there and stuff. But, you know, when you're not, not enjoying your job, you know, it's tough. Absolutely. So, well, particularly being in such like a high performing, you know, pressure filled mm. environment as well. You got to be loving what you're doing to get the most out of yourself, right? Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. You know, it helps, you know, tre tremendous me that I, that I like to come to work every day and, yeah. you know, play with these guys and have fun. So, it's a much better situation for me to be here. Definitely. Well, there's heaps that you just said there that I want to dive into a little bit more later on. But before we do that, I've actually had quite a few questions come on in from uh, chucked it up on the uh, on the story. Uh, and uh, oh, they're, no, they're nice and easy. Nice and easy. Okay. But first one, uh, which Wildcats teammate is the best bloke? The best bloke. Yeah. That's so like, tough. I guess that's not like best teammate or yeah, like yeah. best one to play with, like the actual best bloke. Like. Ooh, that's tough. Some good blokes. Some good blokes. Um... Got to go either Wags or... But I'm angry at Wags, man. He punched me in the face yesterday. At practice. Oh. Like, he didn't punch, but he you know, gave me a good elbow in the face at practice. Oh, day. So we're off him. But so, a shit bloke for that. That but is shit. No, that is not a pretty good bloke. Good, normally he's a pretty good bloke. Him or Carl Zunick. Carl Zunick's my guy too. He looks like he'd be yeah, a good man, bloke, hey? Classic, like, team first, you know, selfless. The most selfless guy you'll ever see kind of guy, you know. I admire a lot of things about that guy. So there's kind of like, there's the two. So Jesse and Kyle, yeah, but yeah. because of the elbow, Kyle's on top. Great. Yeah, yeah. So <laughs> sure. Jesse. Jesse, you're a bad boy. Yeah, keep those elbows low, mate. As yeah. if he still gets the elbows up at training. That's bro. Jess, bro, he's a vet, but he's got all the moves. You know, you got to, when you're not quite moving as fast as you used to, you got to do shit like right. that. Right. Like, I don't know how he does. He gets the charges that he gets. He's just got, oh, like man. you said, all the old he's man genius. tricks. He's like, a genius out there. I don't know how he does it, honestly. 
you know, no, no offense or anything, but the way he moves and stuff like that. Crazy. You know, like, like, you know, just knows. Guy. Just he's, knows. He's all that experience. Efficient. He's, efficient, yeah. he's <laughs> efficient. It must be good having Corey here as well, your brother, who's yeah, also yeah. playing for the Wildcats. Because you've been, this is your second year for the Wildcats, right? Yeah. Well, yeah, like this, I came like at the end of the season. So like, yep. one, like one and a half, I guess, like yep. after this will be one and a half. Kind and when you signed for that half a year, was it like, were you thinking, oh yeah, I want to be here for like a couple more seasons or did that kind of come up in the off season or how did that kind of come about? Yeah, for sure. I was, I was over playing in Europe and I just kind of like was not enjoying playing basketball and stuff like that. You yeah. know, I wanted to come back to Australia for a long time, but just kind of like, wanted, you know, I was chasing the dream, was chasing, you know, I wanted to, you know, I had some goals I wanted to accomplish over there before I came back and stuff like that. But yeah. Yeah, just like kind of didn't wasn't enjoying the basketball side of it, and like everything else was good, you know, living living over there and stuff. But you know, when you we're not not enjoying your job, you know, it's tough. Absolutely, so. well, particularly being in such like a high performing, you know, pressure filled mm. environment as well. You got to be loving what you're doing to get the most out of yourself, right? Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, you know, it helps you know tre tremendous me that I that I like to come to work every day and yeah. you know play with these guys and have fun. So. It's, it's much, much better situation for me to be here. Definitely. Well, there's heaps that you just said there that I want to dive into a little bit more later on. But before we do that, I've actually had quite a few questions come on in from uh, chucked it up on the uh, on the story. Uh, and uh, oh, they're, no, they're nice and easy, nice and easy. Okay. But first one, uh, which Wildcats teammate is the best bloke? The best bloke. Yeah. That's so like, tough. I guess that's not like best teammate or yeah, like yeah. best one to play with, like the actual best bloke. Like. Ooh, that's tough. Some good blokes. Some good blokes. Um... Got to go either Wags or... But I'm angry at Wags, man. He punched me in the face yesterday. Oh. Well, he didn't punch, but he you know, gave me a good elbow in the face at practice. Oh, day. So we're off him. Bit so of a hey, shit bloke for that. That but is shit. No, that is he's not a good bloke. Good, normally he's a pretty good bloke. Him or Carl Zunick. Carl Zunick's my guy too. He looks like he'd be yeah, a good bloke, hey? Yeah. Okay. Classic, like team first you know selfless the most selfless guy you'll ever see kind of guy you know i admire a lot of things about that guy. so there's kind of like there's the two so jesse and kyle yeah, but yeah. because of the elbow kyle's on top great yeah, yeah. so sure, sure. <laughs> jesse you're a bad boy yeah keep those elbows low mate as yeah, if he yeah. still gets the elbows up at training bro, jess bro he's a vet but he's got all the moves you know you gotta when you're not quite moving as fast as you used to you gotta do shit like right that, he's you know? a, i don't know how he does he gets the charges that he gets he's just got oh, like man. you said all the old he's man genius. tricks he's like, a genius out there i don't know how he does it honestly with, you know no, no offense or anything but the way he moves and stuff like that Crazy. You know, like, you know, just knows guy. just he's, knows he's all a, that experience efficient. he's efficient <laughs> 